Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Uh, before we get started, I do want to encourage you to check out my store, store.greatdetectives.net, where you can pick up all my books, audiobooks, and ebooks. Among them, all I needed to know I learned from Columbo, and all I needed to know I learned from Dragnet. Each of these contains the histories of seven great fictional detectives or policemen, as well as life lessons that can be learned from their adventures. And you can pick that up in, as an ebook or as an audiobook through audible.com or the iTunes store. Just go to store.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for today's episode of Inspector Thorne. The original air date on this one is July the 27th, 1951. And this is the Vacant Lot Murder Case. And now, the National Broadcasting Company presents Inspector Thorne in The Vacant Lot Murder Case. Tonight, the National Broadcasting Company presents the exploits of the spectacular young Inspector Thorne of the Homicide Bureau. Those investigations rank with many of the most celebrated ones in the annals of crime fiction. An investigator smart enough to claim he is dumb and modest enough to believe it. Tonight, Inspector Thorne turns to the vacant lot murder case. As tonight's Inspector Thorne murder case opens, picture, if you can, a vacant lot late on a summer evening. A street lamp casting a feeble light on a large for sale sign near the pavement. A man stops in a puzzled way and says to himself, This is a funny thing. He said to come to number 1220. Must have made a mistake. This is a vacant lot. You looking for somebody, sir? Yes, for number 1220. But I don't see any. Well, there's no 1220 on this block, mister. I live just across the street. I know there ain't. I guess you got the wrong address. Yes, it looks that way, son. Thank you, anyway. That's okay. Good night. I wonder if this is a trap. Just, just what I thought. You, you lured me here to murder me. Help. Police. <laughs> you killed me. What a fool I was. Come here. <laughs> And five minutes later, the police are on the scene in the person of the spectacular Inspector Thorne with his right-hand man, Sergeant Muggin. And as he bends over the murdered man, we hear him say, Sergeant Muggin, keep that crowd back. Come on, move on. You hear me? Get going, all of you. Find anything on the body, Chief? Nothing but a bunch of keys and some money in his pockets, Muggin. His face rings a bell with me. But I go blank when I think a name. Wait a second, Muggan. Here's a tailor's label in his coat pocket with his name and address. Huh? It says Arthur Hayward, 470 Maple Street. Rings no bells here, Inspector Thorne. Look, Muggan, there's a girl making for the alley across that vacant lot. Stop her, quick. Hey, you. Stop where you are or I'll shoot. We're the police. Come back here. We don't want to shoot a woman. I'm coming. I don't know anything about this. What do you want? I'm Inspector Thorne. This is Sergeant Muggan. What's your name? What's your hurry getting off a murder scene? My name's Della Laverne. I don't know anything about a murder. Listen, Della, lying to Inspector Thorne won't get you anywhere. I'm not lying. Why were you running across this vacant lot? It's a shortcut home. Where do you live? West 23rd Street. That's 40 blocks from here, so the shortcut story don't go. Come over here. Look at this murdered man. Do you recognize him? He's a complete stranger to me, Inspector Thorne. How is it you're not carrying a handbag, Della? Handbag? Sergeant Muggan, look behind that big for sale sign in the vacant lot. I've got a hunch that's where she was hiding. Maybe she dropped her handbag with a murder gun in it there. Okay, Chief. Inspector Thorne, I'll tell you the truth. I do know the murdered man. His name is Arthur Hayward. Arthur Hayward. Why didn't you admit you knew him in the first place? Because I didn't want to get him into trouble with his wife. 
That's why, Inspector Thorne. Dead men can't get into trouble with their wives. Well, I didn't think of that. I'm a little dumb myself, but I did. Your hunch was 100% right, Chief. Here's a dame's handbag. Found it behind a for sale sign. No gun in it, though. The murder was committed five minutes before we got here, Muggan. That gave her time to get rid of it. I'll have the boys give this vacant lot the fine tooth comb treatment, Chief. Right, Sergeant Muggan. Well, Della, just to save time, suppose you tell us why you murdered this man. You won't find any gun of mine here, Inspector Thorne. I didn't kill Mr. Haywood. No? I was here because Mr. Haywood telephoned and asked me to meet him here tonight in front of this wet, vacant lot. Phoned you? Yes. Because I didn't want to be seen on account of his wife, I waited behind that for sale sign. A dark night, a vacant lot, a lady hidden behind a real estate sign. Fine setting for a murder. But while I was still behind the sign, I saw Mr. Haywood coming. I heard him muttering to himself. I'll finish that line for you, Della. You saw somebody come along and shoot him. That it... Believe it or not, that's exactly what happened, Inspector Thorne. I've heard that kind of story before. It's got whiskers, Della. By way of advice from a dumb cop to a smart girl, try another. Hey, uh, are you gents the cops? Come on, move along, kid. Chase yourself. <laughs> I got something to tell you. What's on your mind, son? I'm Inspector Thorne. Inspector Thorne? The big shot from Homicide? That's who he is, bud. Who's that little brat? Get him out of here, Inspector. That's all from you, Della. All right, son. Go ahead. What's your name? My name is Jimmy Kildare, and I, I live in that house across the street. Did you see this man shot down, Jimmy? <laughs> no, sir. But I talked to the gentleman before he was killed. Talked to him? The gentleman was all mixed up. He said he was looking for number 1220 on this block. 1220? I told him there wasn't no 1220. That'd be this vacant lot. So I told him he must have the wrong address. What then, Jimmy? That was all, Inspector Thorne. I kept moving on. Mom had sent me to the delicatessen for some things, and when I got back, she told me about the gent being murdered. Did you see this girl hiding behind the for sale sign there? No, sir. I, I didn't look that way. Say, did she kill him? I didn't kill anybody. You That's little... all, Jimmy. And thank you. I may see you again. If you want me, I live in number 1223 across the street. Bye, sir. Inspector Thorne. Yes, Della? I forgot to tell you about Mr. Haywood talking to that boy. Why do you think Mr. Haywood asked him where to find number 1220? He knew this was a vacant lot. I don't get it. You should. If. If what? If you told the murdered man to meet you at a phony address and waited there to murder him... What? Sergeant Muggan. Where's your chief? I think that's the ambulance coming now to pick up the body. Yeah. What about this dame? Tell the boys to take her down to my office and hold her. And keep a sharp eye on her, Muggan. You're telling me, chief. After she's safely tucked away, meet me at the murdered man's house. I'm on my way there to break the news to his wife. Here's the address. Mrs. Arthur Hayward is the poor woman's name. Be seeing you there, chief. Yes? Is Mrs. Hayward at home? I'm Mrs. Hayward. I suppose you want to see my husband? My name is Thorne. Inspector Thorne of the police. The police? Oh, come in. I'm afraid you must brace yourself for very bad news, Mrs. Hayward. Bad news, Inspector Thorne? What? Uh, that's your living room, isn't it? Oh, yes, but why? I suggest we go in there. Oh, surely. Now, sit down in this chair. Oh. What I have to tell you is quite terrible. Terrible? Uh, tell me what you mean, please. It's about your husband, Mrs. Hayward. My husband? Your husband was murdered about a half hour ago. What? The killer stepped out from a vacant lot in the dark and shot him. <laughs> My husband murdered. Easy. You're, you're becoming hysterical. No, I'm not hysterical. Easy now. My husband wasn't murdered, Inspector Thorne. He and I were just having a snack in the pantry. What? Yes, I'll call him. Arthur, dear. Coming, Ethel. Arthur, this is Inspector Thorne from the police. From the police? He came to report that you had been murdered. Is that correct, Inspector Thorne? There must be some mistake, Mr. Hayward. For a murdered man, I'm very much alive. Oh, if you hadn't been here at home, Arthur, I'd have fainted when Inspector Thorne told me. A woman we caught running away from the murder scene positively identified the body as yours, Mr. Hayward. This is utterly fantastic. I've never heard anything like it. To top the thing off, we found this tailor's label in the murdered man's coat. Oh, uh, it's my tailor, all right. And my name and address. This is the darndest thing I ever saw. Did you miss any of your clothes recently or give them away, Mr. Hayward? Now, let me think. Arthur, remember? You gave that blue serge suit you didn't like to your brother, John. That's right, I did. Last weekend at our little place in the country. Inspector Thorne, do, 
Do you think it was my brother who was murdered? There's a certain resemblance, Mr. Hayward. It may be. Oh, this is dreadful. Now, don't jump at conclusions until you see the body. It may not be your brother at all. But it must be. This label comes from the suit I gave him. Perhaps he didn't like the suit any better than you did, Arthur, and gave it away to somebody. Oh, I imagine that's Sergeant Muggan who works with me. I'll let him in. I thought it was you, Muggan. Come in here. I want you to meet somebody. Huh? Sergeant Muggan, meet Mr. Arthur Hayward. Listen, Chief, I'm in no frame of mind to stand any kidding right now. Inspector Thorne isn't kidding you, Sergeant Muggan. I am Arthur Hayward, and this is my wife. Inspector Thorne thinks some mistake has been made, Sergeant. If it has, it's uh, not the first one that was made tonight, ma'am. I might as well spill it now as later, Chief. What's that, Muggan? I let that dame we nabbed at the murder scene get away from me. You mean you let Della Laverne give you the slip? Call me all the names you want, Chief. The dame gave me a smooth story about seeing a guy doing the killing. I see. Said she saw Wade toss the murdered gun away, started leading me to the spot, and made a clean break. I, I sent out a general alarm for her. I'm betting we'll never see her again. Yeah, don't let it get you down, Muggan. It's a bad break, but those things happen. I should have caught on a dame with a name like Della Laverne was a smoothie. And that's a real name, all right. I got this calling card of hers out of her handbag. Inspector Thorne. If the woman who identified the murdered man as my husband, Arthur, was really Della Laverne, she must have been insane. You know this woman then, Mrs. Hayward? I know who she is, and so does my husband. Ethel, please don't bring this out. This is a murder investigation, Mr. Hayward. Arthur, let's forget family skeletons and such things. Tell Inspector Thorne who Della Laverne is and her shameful connection with your brother, John. You must tell him, dear. I hope we'd never hear of it again, Ethel. But you're right. We must tell Here's the whole dirty story, Inspector Thorne. Yes? Well, my brother John had a bad criminal record. Criminal record? Out on the West Coast where we used to live. John was cashier at a big bank out there and made off with nearly a half million in bearer bonds. Was he caught? Yes, he got ten years for it and served nearly the full term. Where does Della Laverne come into the picture? I'll answer that, Inspector Thorne. Della Laverne, the woman Sergeant Muggins says escaped from the murder scene... Went to prison for the same crime. You mean she was an accomplice of your husband's brother, Mrs. Hayward? Yes. And she was sentenced for five years. And when she was released, she swore she'd kill John the day he was set free. She thought he had informed the police of her part in the crime. If she went up for five years and your husband's brother for ten, she had nearly five years to plan his murder. Yes. But we're not certain yet that the man murdered tonight is your husband's brother. Mr. Hayward... You say you gave him a blue serge suit last weekend in the country? I was surprised to see him there, Inspector Thorne. I hadn't seen him since he went to prison. A bad penny always turns up. When he showed up at our little place in the country, he said he was in a bad way, so I gave him that suit and some money. Even though he was my brother, I, I wanted to be rid of him so he wouldn't disgrace my wife Ethel and me any further. I understand. I do the same thing myself in similar circumstances. He said he was flat broke and destitute. I was so upset seeing him... It never occurred to me to ask what he did with a half million he stole. That's just what I was thinking, Inspector Thorne. Maybe that woman, Della Laverne, has the money. How could she have it, Ethel? Have you forgotten what happened when she got out of prison five years ago? I remember she came here and tried to blackmail you for a lot of money. What's that? She tried to get $10,000 from Arthur, under threat of making it public that the notorious criminal John Hayward was Arthur's brother. What did you say to that, Mr. Hayward? I recall the old saying, never to give a blackmailer the first dollar, and threaten to have her arrested. Well, in any event, it proves that she didn't get away with a half million she and John stole. Without talking out of turn, Chief. Yes, Sergeant Muggins. I'm getting the idea Mr. Hayward's brother was bumped by the dame for that wad of loot. We're not sure the murdered man is Mr. Hayward's brother. Well, would it help if my wife and I went with you to identify the body, Inspector Thorne? The body is at the morgue, still in the medical examiner's hands now, but, uh, say in half an hour, I could send a car for you. We'll be ready, Inspector Thorne. But Arthur... To that horrible place, the morgue. It's the only way to find out, dear. Oh, I, I suppose so. Sergeant Muggan and I will meet you there. Goodbye till then. Somebody should bat me one for letting that Laverne dame slip out of my hands. Forget it, Muggan. When we get to the car, radio the Department of Criminal Records. What about you? Tell them to get the, the full file and photographs of Della Laverne and John Hayward up to my office, quick. Gotcha, Inspector Thorne. <laughs> And a few moments later, as Inspector Thorne is scanning the criminal records of John Hayward and Della Laverne in his office at the Homicide Bureau, we see Della herself excitedly knocking on the door in a notorious criminal hangout in New York's Lower East Side. Yes! Yes, Lacey! Open the door, it's me, Della, hurry! 
Have you got the brains of an idiot coming here? I got brains enough to trick Inspector Thorne and the stupid cop with him, Sergeant Muggin. Get out of here, you fool. We'll both be pinched. Get out. I am not getting out, Flash. Don't think I'll take the rap for the murder of Hayward alone. I'll throw you to the police. Now, how could I put the rap for Hayward's murder on you? I didn't even know the man you call Hayward was murdered. You lie through your teeth. Inspector Thorne nabbed me on the scene and you tipped them off. But I made idiots of them. I made a getaway. You make idiots of Thorne and Muggin? You're the idiot. I told you that phone call to meet Hayward at that vacant lot was phony. But no, you, you, you turned a deaf ear to me. You had that call put through to me yourself, Flash Macy. You planted me there so you could kill him and frame me. Listen, Della, don't try any tricks on me. It's unhealthy. You asked for it, Flash, and now you'll get it. Give me that gun and do it gentle and careful. Oh. I got you covered. Give it to me before I blow a couple of slugs in you. Oh, no. No. No, I'll give you the gun. Here, I'll, I'll drop it on the floor. Now, let's talk sense. You think I believe you made a getaway from Inspector Thorne? It was mugging that I tricked. You're tricking yourself, Della. I got away from them both. Listen, Della. Did he get your name? Yeah, I, I had a card in my bag. Besides, my name slipped out in the excitement. They had me caught. Okay. You got one chance left, Della. One last chance. How? What last chance? Run back to Thorne at the Homicide Bureau. Turn myself in? I've got your hot spot before. Oh, what, what if you have? I'm telling you for the last time, Della. Rush as fast as your legs will carry to Inspector Thorne. Put on the act. Tell him you were scared and made the terrible mistake of running away. Oh, it sounds crazy. It's me. your only chance, Della. Your only chance. Oh, all right, I'll go. But if you're tricking me, every I'll... second counts. Go. <laughs> Inspector Thorne in The Vacant Lot Murder Case will return in just a moment. But first, it's the Silver Jubilee on NBC. We'd like to take a minute to give you some program notes concerning the shows we've prepared for your radio entertainment. First of all, a new comedy team has joined NBC. They're Bob Elliott and Ray Goulding. And they bring you light satire and nonsense sketches designed to display their many voiced talents. Bob and Ray come to you Monday through Friday afternoon. And for one fun-filled hour on Saturday evening. Then on Sunday, hear the further adventures of The Saint as played by Tom Conway. And hard-hitting action with screen actor Lloyd Nolan as Martin Kane, Private Eye. Sunday, too, actor Carlton Young brings you the double role of Philip Galt and The Whisperer. And later Sunday evening, Mr. Moto, Mr. I.A. Moto, ace Japanese-American security agent, bids you join him as he puts on the black cloak of mystery and enters the realm of international intrigue. Be sure to hear Dimension X on NBC every Thursday evening. Stories dealing in time and space, and brought to you in future tense. Yes, morning, noon, and night, for the very best in radio entertainment, keep your dial set at this, your NBC station. <laughs> Now, back to Inspector Thorne and the vacant lot murder case. And now, a few minutes after the scene we just heard between Della Laverne and Slash Macy, evidently her accomplice, we see Inspector Thorne at the morgue beside the murdered man's body, and we hear him say to Arthur Hayward, so you positively identify this body, Mr. Hayward? Yes, Inspector Thorne. It is my brother John. What a fearful end he came to. Perhaps he's just as well off, Arthur. A life of crime, years in prison. A marked man always. Maybe so, Ethel. But to me, the brother I was brought up with... Try not to think about it, Mr. Hayward. The identification of your brother's body is a great help to me. It's easy to see your brother's uh, pronounced family resemblance. Yes, People used to say that if my hair weren't so black and poor John was so blonde, well, but anyway... What do you know, Inspector Thorne? Know what, Sergeant Muggan? With a thousand cops looking for that dame, Della Laverne, and get nowhere. What does she do but walk in here and ask for you? Della Laverne here? That's it, Chief. I gotta wait outside. I wonder what her game is. Mr. Hayward, would it inconvenience you and your wife to stay in the reception room until I've talked to Della Laverne? We'll be glad to stay, won't we, Ethel? If only to satisfy my woman's curiosity, yes, Inspector Thorne. I'll tell you what she says, Mrs. Hayward. I'll not keep you waiting too long. 
Well, Della, I wish I were smart enough to know what your game is coming here. You're a very clever man, Inspector Thorne. A very smart man. Thanks for the compliment, Della. But believe me, far from being smart, I'm blind on all fronts, except on catching murderers. What's your game coming here? Please, Inspector Thorne, there's no game, no trick. I suddenly realized how silly I was to make a getaway from your Sergeant Muggin. It was only because I was so frightened. You must admit you practically accused me of murder on that vacant lot. I have the murdered man's criminal record on this desk. And I have yours. Why did you meet him at that vacant lot? If you didn't murder him, who did? Why did you lie and say his name was Arthur Hayward when you knew very well it was his brother, John Hayward? I'm not hiding that I was at Crook or that I was in prison. But I went to meet Arthur Hayward on a phony telephone call. Phony telephone call? Who made the phony call? Answer me and don't lie. You're as near the chair as you can get without being in it. That phone call was phony. I fell for it because I thought I could get some money out of Arthur Haywood for not singing his brother John was a crook. And I'm telling you again, the man I said was Arthur Haywood was uh, Arthur Haywood. You've certainly got a end of fry, Della. Lies on top of lies. I was sent to that murder scene on a frame. And I'll tell you who framed me. All right, tell me. I'm working with a guy named Slash Macy. He put me on the hot spot to save his own hide. He's your killer, not me, Inspector Thorne. Okay. I'll list you as innocent. Thanks. Thanks for believing me. Innocent until proved guilty. Sergeant Muggan. Here I am, Chief. Let this girl out. But put two men to trail her and check every move she makes. You dirty cop. What else could I expect? Show her out, Sergeant Muggan. And, uh, watch your step this time. You're telling me, Chief? Come along, Della. Take her out through the reception room. I want Arthur Hayward and his wife to get a good look at her. Okay, Chief. <laughs> Well, Mr. and Mrs. Hayward, was that woman Sergeant Muggan led through here, the one you know as Della Laverne? It's the woman who tried to blackmail my husband. No question. She's the one, Inspector Thorne. Mm. Now, uh, tell me something about that uh, little place of yours in the country, Mr. Hayward. Do you own it or rent it? I own it now, but my brother John owned it originally. What did you do, uh, buy it from him? Yes. John told me he wanted the money to pay lawyer's fees before he went on trial for the $500,000 robbery he was accused of. He said he was not guilty of any wrongdoing. He was my brother. I believed him. The records here show he was guilty. I asked about the cottage because of the 500000 he stole. It was never found. What? Never recovered? No. I've got an idea. His coming to the cottage and asking you for a suit and some money was a ruse. Chances are his real object was to find the place empty and get the loot he may have hidden there. I don't see where he could have hidden it. But it might be a good thing for you to make a thorough search of the cottage and grounds, Inspector Thorne. I'll send a searching squad there at once, Mr. Hayward. Oh, uh, here's a road map to help them find it. The place is off the beaten track. Fine, thanks a lot. Well, I'll not need you any longer, Mr. and Mrs. Hayward. Good night. Uh, the same car that brought you is outside, ready to take you back. That's very thoughtful of you, Inspector Thorne. Well, let's get started, Ethel. Yes, I'm ready for bed. Good night, Inspector Thorne. <laughs> I saw Mr. and Mrs. Hayward leaving, Chief. What do we do now? Go out to the Hayward weekend place in the country. The search for the 500 grand the murdered man might have stashed there? I don't think we'll find that there, Muggan. No? No, but I do think we'll find something highly interesting to Della Laverne, the woman we nabbed on the murder scene. Della Laverne? And also to her present accomplice in crime, Slash Macy. Slash Macy? Is he in on it too, Chief? We'll see. Anyway, Muggan, I'm about to close this case. <laughs> But is Inspector Thorne about to close the case as he said? For it is now the following morning, and we see him and Sergeant Muggan back in Inspector Thorne's office in the Homicide Bureau, and we hear Sergeant Muggan say, Well, Chief, it looks like we wasted a night searching the Haywoods Weekend Cottage. What did we find? Nothing. I found this bottle, Muggan. It's the clue that will break this case. Huh? Hello, Sergeant Muggan talking. What? Okay, I'll tell the chief. 
Chief, grab your hat. The boys have trailed Della Laverne out to Mr. and Mrs. Haywood. That's what I was looking for, Muggin. Quick, we've got to get there, fast. <laughs> And now, at the Haywards' house, we hear this. Yellow Laverne, what are you doing here? Who's this man with you? You know what we're after, Haywood. Five hundred grand, Haywood. Don't stall if you don't want to be plugged. Arthur, he'll kill you. You got the idea, lady. Five hundred grand, uh, he meets the angels. I haven't got it. You're mad. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm giving you ten seconds, Haywood. One, two, three, four... Stop, I haven't got it. Five, six, seven... Eight, nine. Oh, Don't move, Slash, and I shoot to kill. But the boy, Logan, get that gun away from him. Don't move, Slash. Thanks, Slash. Not so tough as you act, huh? Handcuff him and Della Laverne together, Muggan. You don't understand, Inspector Thorne. Slash and I were just making a social call on Mr. and Mrs. Haywood. With a gun in your hand and murder in your heart. Yeah, dumb Thorne. Hurry, Muggan, with the cuffs. Right. All set, Chief. Got him. I didn't murder Haywood's brother, Inspector. Slash, put him on the spot. Shut your trap, I'm man. doing the talking, Slash. This guy, Haywood's got 500 grand that belongs to Della and me. Inspector Thorne, these people came to murder me for something I haven't got. How could I have the money my brother John stole and went to prison for? I know how. It's because you, Arthur Hayward, are not Arthur Hayward. You're actually the ex-convict John Hayward. You murdered your brother, Arthur. Ethel, give me that tummy gun. Kill them all, John. Mow them down. They ask for it, Ethel. It's Thorne or... Morgan, I... drop to the floor. Point that tummy gun to the ceiling, John Hayward. I've got you covered. He's got us, Ethel. He's got us. Drop that gun, John Hayward. You're dead. Pick up the gun, Muggan. Get it out of the way. Right, Chief. Now, John Hayward. I'm not John Hayward. I'm Arthur Hayward. You got John's body in the morgue. Is that why you tried to kill me? I went off my Listen head. carefully. Here's the evidence that nails you as the murderer. Evidence? One, the road map you gave me shows your fingerprints as those of the ex-convict, John Hayward. They match the prison fingerprints of John Hayward. Me and me. Right. Now, here are 20 bank books in this woman's name who calls herself Ethel Hayward, your wife. They total $500,000. So what? Ethel here was actually the murdered man's wife. I think... I confess. I was his wife, Arthur's wife. Shut up, Ethel. You're sending us both to the chair. A confession may make the court lenient, John. Don't call me, John, you fool. I'm confessing, John. Keep on, Ethel. When John went to prison, Inspector Thorne, he left the money with me, and I promised to wait for him. Yes? But I got tired waiting for him, so I got a divorce and married Arthur. And when John got out of prison, you and John murdered your husband, Arthur. <laughs> Sorry, Inspector Thorne. John came to our weekend cottage, demanded the 500000 and he and I murdered Arthur. What else could we do? I don't know, Ethel. But dumb as I am, that's the way I figured it. The only clue I had was this bottle of hair dye that John, the ex-convict here, used to dye his hair black to make him look like his brother Arthur. Oh, I see. That accursed bottle of hair dye caught John and me. That's all, I guess. I arrest you and John Hayward for first-degree murder. I'm ready to go. You're not so dumb as you made out. I am dumb, but I made out. Take him in, Muggin. Next stop, the chair. And so ends the vacant lot murder case. The part of Inspector Thorne is played by Carl Weber. Direction by Kenneth McGregor. The script was written by Edward Francis. From the original story by Frank Hummert. And now this is Fred Collins inviting you to tune in again next Friday at the same time when the National Broadcasting Company will present Inspector Thorne in The Golden Girl Murder Case. <laughs> Silver Jubilee on NBC. This is Andrea J. Graham, author of the Web Surface series. Oh, and a Madam's Wife. You're listening to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio.
Welcome back. I think Inspector Thorne forgot a few um, steps uh, before the death house. Inspector, shouldn't we put him on trial first? Though I will say that uh, in terms of overall personality and temperament, uh, Inspector Thorne's a little bit toned down from last week. Not quite so shouty and had some pretty easygoing moments with uh, Muggins. Well, now we turn to listener comments and feedback, and we have some uh, reviews on Amazon for the Great Detectives app. Now at uh, 50 uh, reviews, uh, and uh, we have a comment, uh, love Adam's knowledge and the dedication of the podcast. It's great to be able to start a show and follow it all the way through. Uh, keep it up, Adam. Uh, another person, and uh, there have been some changes, so they're just uh, identified on these as Amazon customers. A way fun to listen to. Judy uh, G. writes in, it works well for me as I don't have to restart it after each story. Can listen to several stories at a time, unlike most apps uh, that stop after each one. And uh, TMAJ1972 writes, outstanding shows, outstanding host, and outstanding app. My family and I donate to the podcast now to keep this great show going. Thanks, Adam, and thank you very much. Uh, for your uh, support. And then finally, uh, an email from Regina who says, Hi, Adam, just stumbled upon your great detective site, and I'm thoroughly enjoying these podcasts, both mystery and review shows alike. Thank you so much for your hard work, and thanks for sharing. This has quickly become the highlight of my work day. Well, uh, glad to uh, provide it, Regina, and thanks so much for your comment. All right, that will do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow with Richard Diamond, and next Tuesday it'll be another episode of Inspector Thorne. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives, and become